So for a while now, I've been recommending using MIP streaming, especially if you're hitting VRAM slash RAM bottlenecks, as though it can hurt your CPU usage by a little bit, it can drastically reduce the amount of VRAM that's being utilized and improve your performance and improve 0.1 and 1% lows for your gaming experience. However, during this wipe, I noticed that it seems to be a bit less effective, anecdotally, at least. For example, when I'd run through streets, or run through various different maps, I was noticing that I wasn't really reducing the amount of VRAM that was being utilized, at least on streets, there wasn't much of a difference between me running with MIP streaming on versus off. So I took the liberty to just run through it again, test it again, give you my recommendation on if you should or shouldn't use it, and help explain what MIP streaming actually is so that you guys can understand for future patches and stuff like that. To explain MIP streaming, I wanted to first go over what types of technology are being used for it. Uh, firstly, this is a technology that is used in a lot of different Unity titles. Occlusion culling is essentially cutting off rendering of objects that aren't in your field of view. So to give you an example, if you're on the bottom floor of Interchange in the underground, it wouldn't make sense for the game to render the stuff that is on the second floor, as it's so far out of your view and will take you so long to get to that point that it wouldn't even make sense to put in the resources at all. You don't need to know too much more detail besides that, but this is good to know for explaining how MIP streaming works. See, MIP expands on this principle by instead of fully culling objects that aren't fully outside of your field of view, causing some pop in and stuff like that, it tries to reduce VRAM usage by reducing the MIP level of a texture. For example, the Unity Docs has a great representation of a default texture. If you're not running MIP streaming, it could be using these larger textures for every object that's in your field of view, regardless of where it is on your screen, which will increase VRAM usage for no considerable reason, seeing as some of these objects aren't taking up this amount of pixels on your screen anyway, and you probably won't notice if it downgraded to these lower quality textures. Thus, what MIP streaming is doing is it's taking a bit of your CPU's resources to cull objects that aren't fully in your camera's field of view and lower their quality to improve your VRAM consumption and only improve their quality once you are then looking back at the object. If you guys are interested, I will leave all the links to these docs in the description if you want to read up more about it. I highly recommend it if you're into that sort of thing. Now this is clearly demonstrable in Tarkov and so I'm going to hop into an offline streets raid and show you guys what this does in real time. So now that we're in that offline streets raid, as you can see, if I walk over to street signs, you might be able to notice that as I get closer, the game realizes that the object is within my field of view and then upgrades the texture so that it is at a higher resolution while textures that I can't see, such as the texture behind it, are at a lower resolution to reduce the amount of VRAM that's being utilized. Now for clarity, I do have it on the slowest setting currently available, so Putting it up to a higher setting will improve the speed at which it does this replacement. But this is how it achieves that lower VRAM usage is by swapping in and out textures as quick as it can so that you don't notice it and that it can save on those VRAM use, uh, resources. To give you one more example, if I run down the street right over here and go towards this sign, you'll see it's in that same lower quality texture and then snaps to the higher quality texture as it's in my field of view now. The speed of this can be improved by the two settings that you have in your graphics menu for MIP streaming. That is MIP streaming buffer size and MIP streaming disk usage limit. Without getting too technical, both of these settings at higher settings will speed up the process at which these textures load in and then load out. <laughs> That's a technical term. I believe that both of these settings are in megabytes as the game allows me to set to 64 even though I only have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I believe both these settings are actually in megabytes, especially this one, as this is determining the speed of your drive. So for example, if you have an SSD, but you know that that SSD can only go up to 750 megabytes a second read, then you might not want to push it up to 1024 as you might experience more stutters with that. Though if I set these back to max as what I normally run, if I try to see street signs replace in real time, and I'm going to run back over here to do so, it's a little bit harder for you to tell as it swaps it out much quicker than as I was able to walk up before and then sit here for five seconds and watch it replace it. I go to the other side here. You notice that was considerably quicker than 
when I had it before at its lowest settings. But since I didn't see much of a difference in VRAM consumption with this on versus off, I decided to run a couple benchmarks, both online and offline, just to see if I could notice any considerable performance impact. And the results actually might surprise you. If I pull up my benchmarking document here, these are on streets, and I have them clearly marked for offline and online raids down here. As you can see in my offline raid, with MIP streaming on, I was running about 95 FPS on average with these benchmarks, and the second that I switched it off and restarted my game, I gained 10 to even 15 FPS. Since MIP streaming was putting extra burden on my CPU, disabling it gave it the resources it needed to push harder for other resources in the game besides MIP streaming, which improved the performance due to my CPU bottleneck. But before you jump to conclusions, looking at my online raid, which was a scav raid that I ran with it on and off on streets, you can see that with it off, I had considerably worse 0.1% lows. And if you're not familiar with benchmarking, that just means that I had more opportunities for stutter in my frame times. For example, if I tab back into game, you can see that spike in the graph right there is one of those dips. If I find a container, which I don't think there is one around here, or open my inventory, you can also see those spikes tend to appear as well. And what that reflects to me is that my VRAM needs to clear out more data to my system RAM in order to keep functioning properly when I don't have MIP streaming enabled. And to be clear, the spikes that I just showed you aren't from high VRAM usage. Opening your inventory is just one of those ways for those spikes to occur. This wasn't the end of the world though, because my average FPS was still roughly the same and my 0.1 or my 1% lows rather were roughly the same as well. So it wasn't too much of a big deal. And this could also be run to run variants. If you tuned into my streams a couple of days ago, however, you may have noticed that when I had mid streaming off, I was actually gaining 10 to 15 more FPS on maps where I was CPU bound, but not VRAM bound. Uh, Customs, Woods, I believe, was another one of them that I ran. Those two maps in particular that I was running saw an extra 10 FPS when I turned off MIP streaming because they weren't hitting that bottleneck with my VRAM to begin with. So to finalize, if you do have a VRAM bottleneck and a GPU bottleneck to where your CPU isn't the main reason you're, you're having low FPS, then MIP streaming is a good thing and it will help you increase your FPS, reduce stuttering, all that sort of thing, and reduce the amount of VRAM that you're having utilized. On the flip side, most people playing Tarkov nowadays have a CPU bottleneck and not a GPU one. So in maps like Streets or Lighthouse, where you might be exclusively CPU bottlenecked, having MIP streaming on when you're not even hitting your max VRAM capacity wouldn't make any sense and is simply lowering your FPS. If you are experiencing VRAM hogging and you have a CPU bottleneck, you need to make the decision if you want to have slightly lower FPS on maps where you don't need it, but slightly better consistency on maps when you do need it, or just taking the VRAM stutters on maps where you do need it and then having the better FPS on, on the one you don't. For example, for me, to explain that more clearly, with MIP streaming off, I may have worse 1% and 0.1% lows on average if I were to have it off on that specific map but on maps where I don't need it, like customs and woods, I can experience slightly higher FPS on average because I'm CPU bottlenecked in those scenarios. Whereas if I turned it on, I would have more consistency when I play streets, but less FPS overall on customs and woods because the CPU bottleneck would be greater when I'm playing those maps. So in the end, it's your choice on which one you want to choose. I hope that explanation made sense because I was trying to give you guys all the context that you need to make the decision for yourself. And if it didn't, I'll explain it in a TLDR fashion. If you have a CPU bottleneck, but you don't have a VRAM bottleneck, MIP streaming should not be on your radar. If you have a VRAM bottleneck, but no CPU bottleneck, which would be surprising, then MIP streaming is great. If you have both, it is a give and take depending on which map you're playing. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or ask them in my Discord, which will also be linked at the top of the description. And shortly after this video is posted, I will be streaming where you can also ask questions over on YouTube. You'll probably see it recommended on this page in the first place. And with that, I really want to su uh, support you guys. What? I really want to thank you guys for the support on the most recent video. It was absolutely insane seeing all the positive comments and feedback on that video. It was great. So thank you guys so much for watching, supporting, and 
I can't wait to see you guys next time for the next video because I may be overclocking, but uh, put a little asterisk on that one. But for now, like and subscribe, all that stuff. And this is Clem, clocking out. Later. Wow, the thunder was like perfect there. Did you hear that?